Hello everybody, welcome back to my SketchUp tutorials and demonstrations for this farmhouse. Um, remembering last time that I did the, did the finishing of the outer finishes, all of the siding is done, everything now on the outside of this house is done. I am really happy with it too. I mean, I don't think it could have been, it could look better. I really honestly don't. And you know what so that leaves is that leaves the inside. And that's what today's video is all about. The inside. Um, we'll start here by going from so remember how I sort of showed you how to make components and here was the here's a door right here that I made happy with that door being there so I'm gonna keep it there um, and we'll be doing more putting more of these in today and if you're gonna question anything about these windows over here these new ones I mentioned in my last video that I would put those in outside of screenplay because um, it's just as I put in any of the other windows and so just seeing repetition it being that repetitive it would get really dreadfully boring and my the goal for these videos are not to be boring but for something that you would like to see so today I'm, we're doing something different all right now to recap that to find the variant heights of things hover over the corner or edge that you want to find the height of like this one here with the green and as you see here, see that little gray dot at the top of the blue line in the middle of the screen? And you see that dotted line? It goes to that very corresponding height. And also, while I'm hovering, look at um, the bottom right. See where it says length? And that shows me exactly how tall that is. And for this case, 7 feet. And I want to center this door. So, in remembering how far across this door is, look from the center of the door to the edge. One foot three for each side then. And there you have a centered opening. Because that's what I want in this room. Now this video won't do all the interior finishes of all the rooms. I'm just for this video, I'm just really just going to show you these two rooms here. Uh, but uh, but they will be definitely finished. These two rooms when this video is over. So uh, you will like it. So in the first step, you know, I mean the walls, of course those walls were already made. I'm actually going to make another video series that shows a house from the ground up. And I mean totally from scratch. This video was just to show you some tidbits and credentials of things in SketchUp. Not, not to actually be really, um, really in actual construction of in SketchUp just um, just showing you how to like make components, how to place them, how to make finishes, that sort of thing. But I actually got a got um, a, um, comment from so, uh, another YouTube user, a SketchUp user and um, a house builder, well a popsicle stick house builder. He um, he brought it to my attention that um, he would love to see a whole house being come up. And then that actually got me thinking. Yeah, that I actually think. Just kidding. But anyway. Now this, this is going to be an arch. Here, so I'm going to make kind of an arch doorway. 
because this divides the parlor from the dining room. Let's see, six inches maybe. Oh, we'll go to a foot. And this will actually be open. These other two um, doorways are actually going to have a door in them, and there's going to be a door in there too. So, yeah. Alright. And then just for these rooms here, I got all of the door, door openings that I need. And I'll also show you how I do waste coating. What waste in this video? What waste coating is is um, basically a chair rail. That's all it really is. It's just a different term to use. But yeah, waste coating is only is just a chair rail. Chair rail is basically a piece of trim, um, a fraction of the fraction of the wall on the way up. And you'll see it whenever I make it. Alright, so I mean, I think, yeah, in um, one of the previous videos, I made door frame. Like I showed you how to make a door frame there. And I'm actually going to, I'm using that model right now. So what you do is you close these up. And you use the offset button. Offset. And also here, just double click, and it'll make it the exact same as you had it on the on your last move. Double click, double click. No, not erase yet. And then do this and hover like that. Double click, double click, double click. Now we erase. Go under, erase, and again, this is my way of doing things. Um, what a lot of people I know do are just go to the warehouse and um, warehouse community and get models that way, which they download their own, which they download doors instead of making them. I make my doors just because I like my own personal like having my own personal identity eh, it happens and it actually match it's actually in unity of my style I mean I really just I have a feeling I really don't feel that it's really really mine and that's how I get satisfaction from these models. Is knowing that it really is mine. And that I made it. Now, however, I do download toilets. I cannot make toilets at all. And those I, those I download. And yes, I download it from Google. But in any other in any other circumstance, I make it. I even make my own kitchen sinks, dishwashers, refrigerators, etc. I mean, it, those things that I just mentioned are all very simple. Actually, kind of just letting you know that that is a dishwasher, that is a refrigerator. It doesn't have all the little buttons and stuff on them. I mean, I make my own stoves. Um, too. I mean, but. I girl all right so now I got all the door frames done so yeah when I when I do a room I'd recommend you doing all the doors and putting the frames in first just so then when you do the when you do all the baseboards you can do it in one 
won't interfere. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the baseboards. That means the runners that go all, all the way around the circumference of these few rooms here. And I'm going to color the baseboards already. I pick my color, click it, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to offset. And usually I offset my baseboards at one half. A lot of people do it one fourth because more baseboards are that way. But I'm just used to a place in where I lived in Kansas where the houses, the baseboards actually were like one half by four inches. And that's what I that's the model I usually follow. So here's what I do here, and that's how I clear a door when doing baseboards. I just make the line go all the way to the end here. I get rid of these. Because when I right click and say select all, I don't want it to um, select all connected. I don't want it to select the house too. And then it also makes it slow, makes the com computer slow. I don't know how your computer does it, but mine just makes it very slow and it's frustrating. But in, I think the previous video I did, um, make an account for that SketchUp as well as any other program though any program has its frust frustrations so I mean hear how people knock SketchUp just because of some things that they can or cannot do um, but they just need to think that there are other programs too even though like they say Rhino or ArchiCAD is so much better still has its downfalls and also, I mean, I'm thankful that SketchUp is as user-friendly as it is. Because there are other programs that, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I just totally suck at. I really do. No matter how big the imagination is. But, I mean, it's just kind of knowing the controls and how much of in control you are with some of the things you're handling like this for instance I can I mean making it lot making the project line by line like that's why they call it SketchUp that's I mean that's what makes it as user friendly as it is and easy and fun alright right now I'm gonna extrude the baseboards okay so four inches and I'm just gonna stick with that model As you can see, look at that. Baseboards and see it's already colored. Alright, so that's how you do baseboards. And for now, I'm going to keep these lines here, even though they're only temporary. Um, because I mean when I work on a few certain rooms I don't want like whenever I choose a floor like let's do that right now I go down to wood for this one it's a nice wooden floor don't you think you see for now I'm working on this room here and then also when I do the baseboards and stuff for this room it's not going to interfere with this room at all but when I'm done with both rooms then I remove the line plain and simple or when I if I were to have a door there I wouldn't need a line like this door here is a blocker already and I didn't do anything here because I knew that I was going to work on both of these rooms and so yeah now what I want to do is crown molding crown molding is easy quick I just make a line going across the rooms I want to work on it makes these planes 
and like the baseboards I color them already see and then also I determine I determine the I'm sorry I cannot the width of these um of these boards here so and then I bring it down however far I want I just go with four inches but you can do whatever you want but I mean it's gotta be it's gotta be practical though I mean um if you're gonna, I mean, if you're just playing around, you know, I mean, it's fine. But if you want to put some, something for to let you present to others, um, uh, try to make sure that it is um, up to par in terms of accuracy and realism. You can see here, I'm just finishing off here. And don't you see all of the crown molds already on the... Notice how fast that was? Yeah, that's fast. Because actually I heard from somebody how frustrated and angry they were that um, it's taking them forever to do the details in their house. SketchUp. So this is just a quick, easy way to... Um, to fix that I mean and you don't even have to get complex with it either I mean this is this is simple yeah this is simple but it will but it has its way of having a very very um, sharp look to it though and if you were to upload something like this to the warehouse you get a lot of good reviews a lot of good ratings But I mean, this is the way to go when finishing a house. I mean, if you were to finish it. I mean, not everybody cares to see all these finishes, but um, let's see. Not everyone cares to see all these finishes, but if they did, then um, you would want to make it presentable. Just try to find the color I want markers you should get up the best colors from here like that and you see how well it goes with the floor but I usually like to do this and this shows you how I'm going to show you how I edit colors in here I pit say I mean I want my wall to have a texture but I hate this I hate this color so and uh, because I want to use this again several other times what I do is um, I would I click on this little plus sign now but this color has to already exist this material has to already exist somewhere on the model for this to work so click on create material this little box with a plus sign and there material one alright so you can change, you can move this little square around. You can change how dark or light it is. Or here's what I want to do is I want to make it like this color. So I go click on it and click OK. So confirming that this is material 1. Click on it again. Click edit. Then you see this little box with the eyedropper tool in it. Hover over the color you wish to, you wish to mix it with. And you see how this changed material one up here? And then, whatever, if you made your whole house this color and you don't want to and you want to change your mind, easy, easily said, just hover over the color you want to change, put hover over it, push shift, then click. 
over whatever of that color you didn't want, any of those squares will have that, um, will be colored with the new color, but you have to push shift, hold, and click. So here is your dining room. Because obviously this is going to be the kitchen, so dining room's got to be next to the kitchen, adjacent to the kitchen. Usually what I like to do is I like to color all my walls the same color just because it looks, it actually looks nice and it actually, it cuts down on file size. The more very, the more colors you have in a model, the bigger the file size. So what I'll do here, usually how I finish closets is usually just for the benefit of when I'm looking upward. So I'm just going to put a shelf in this closet. Darn it. Now that's what I hate. Okay. Just make two lines. Make it up as high as you want or as low as you want. I usually go to there and then wood. Color in between the lines and extrude it one foot. Enter. Sometimes I go that extra mile by putting that unfinished wood on the bottoms. I always do that when I do count when I do um, kitchen cabinets, kitchen cupboards. I always do that. Uh, you know, it just gives it another one of those realistic flares. And I shoot for realism every time I use the software. Every time. Alright. See, here I want to put my doors in. But, and they look, I want to have them just like this. Now, unlike that last video where I didn't make those windows and doors, the um, components. Luckily, I made these components here. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong button. So, I go to Window, Components. Because it saves into my model. So I go to in model. Door. Voila. There it is. There's my door. So for this one I'll just move it. In place. Like so. And then grab it by the corner again. Control but control key, then click. You don't need to hold control key, just push control once. You see this little plus by my cursor? That just means it's copying. And you'll see it again. See how the cursor doesn't have a plus? Hover over what you want to copy. Control key, see the plus appear? And grab your piece. Um, you have to select it, but with a component, you just have to click on it once. And then let's move it 90 degrees. See in the lower right where it says angle? Type in 90. And there you go. Or I mean, type in any degree angle that you need. Um, depending on the wall. And put it in place. And there you have there you have doors. With knobs. Knobs are relatively new. Let me show you something else. We're going to make ceilings now. Well, I'm going to make the ceilings. Sorry. Alright, you see here? What I like to do is I'll take the layers, and whatever layer is above the layer I'm working, I currently was working with. For example, second floor. So what I'll do here is I'll make layers. And also, you know, to cut down on file size as well, you know, you want as least layers as you can. I just have the number of floors here and the roof. That's all. You see here? I just make those construction lines to close close to make these planes. And that's on that's honestly how easy it is to make a ceiling. And also you see here it's also easy because look, you remove the you may remove that. See it's just on this layer here. See how easy that is? You don't have to mess with anything else. Because it disappears as soon as you turn off the second floor layer. Because 
When you turn off the second floor layer, I am assuming that what you want to see is the first floor. Or at least the floor below it, you know, I mean, depending on how tall your house is, or building, other building or whatever. Duh, a house is a building. Wow. I get my special moments. Bear with me. All right. Plaster. See, this is what I mean. I'm using this color again. And this is usually how I make my ceilings. All right, let's do some waste coating. And that'll be the, con the conclusion of this video. The dining room usually has like a chair rail or something. So here's what I'll do. Instead of drawing new lines, I'll just take the baseboard, right click, makes it select. The move tool, which is this little star up here, control key, and however high you want it to be. So I'll say two foot seven for now. That's usually how, it's usually, and then that'll be the bottom of your chair rail. And then from there you extrude it. Usually have it less than the actual um, baseboards and crowns. Now from in here, what I like to do is I like to erase here. But it turns out that these aren't closed yet. If you see thick lines like this, you know, just draw over them and that will close them up for you. And then, and then from inside, I like to clean this up because it just looks cleaner and it you're not going to believe it significantly cuts the file size down. The less unneeded lines you have, the smaller the file, which means more use for you. And there, there's a chair rail. Here's what I like to do for, here's what I usually like to do. There's a material that I made in one of my other houses that I want, so I'll just go in. And watch as I go to the warehouse and grab a model. Mine I typed in Paul Wall because that's me. That's who I am in SketchUp. You see, there's me and there's all... have quite a few stuff here. Mm, let's see, Paul Wall House. Let's try to make that a little more... Uh, not what. Because I have um, like 10 or 11 pages, I have like 10 pages, sometimes it's hard, this is it, here. But I mean, you, I love this, I love this program so much, I couldn't, get, I couldn't give it up, I really couldn't. And this model here has that, has that um, texture that I made, so I'm going to use it again. And like so, I use the eyedropper tool. Come over here, and voila, I use it in this model. Doesn't that look nice? Yeah, I think it looks nice. You don't have to think it looks nice, because, I mean, it's an opinion question. Alright, see? Now what I'll do here is I'll just... Because I know I don't need it anymore, I'll right-click on the component, delete, warning. All instances will be deleted. Yes. Let's get rid of it. Hello. Delete. And delete. There. Well, also, whenever whenever I upload to the warehouse, it asks me if I want to purge my model, and I always say yes because when the when it isn't here, whenever you, the um the items aren't in presence, but are still in the library. Um, purging them will clear the library of whatever is not shown. Alright, so it's already Elon. It's already programmed at two foot one, uh, and two foot seven. Sorry. So I just come up like that. Copy. No, whenever no, whenever doing this, you kind of gotta watch it because 
it got in the way of these windows. So in that case, I will have to draw them. see how this did. Yep, you just have to draw over it to close it up. But I mean, look at it though. I mean, the house is, look at how simple the house is compared to most, to a lot of SketchUp artists. I mean, they go into all sorts of details and everything, and I really don't generally. But I mean, look at how nice it, I mean, don't you think it looks nice? shows you just, I mean, simplicity um, has its real benefit. And besides, you can do almost anything with it. Yeah, but I like to use the simple techniques because um, you can do more with it and it's quicker. It is quicker. Decided I have an ace up my sleeve. So now I'm just going to go ahead and do as I did on the other waistcoats. Close them up well. Erase what I need to erase. I think I got it. And just go back and erase the construction lines. Because, you know, any erasing helps. So, okay. I did waste coating in this room. I really did do things. Um, it turned out. And let's have a look at it from the room from inside now. Go back and I turn back on the second floor layer. I usually view it with view style profiles. Oh crap. Didn't finish that though. Sorry, those things bother me. Yep, 
Yep, there are me running into those walls again. Glad I'm not that way in real life. Man, boy, would I have a concussion. See how... It's so simple, but... I think it still looks good. Here's your five panel door. Door. Ceiling. But honestly, I don't think I can beat the finish. I don't think I've made anything that really looks that nice. Well, um, I guess this is the time to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please rate, comment, subscribe. Really appreciate it. Uh, this is yet another one. Next video will just be more of more interior finishing. And um, I'll do a little more cleanup outside of the camera. So I hope you enjoyed it. And have a great day, everyone. All right. Goodbye.